Hey guys, so I was inspired by a YouTuber I watch, and she goes by the name of Lavender Town. And one of the ideas I was really intrigued by was doing a speed paint and reading off a creepy pasta. So, of course, that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So, relax, watch with headphones, and go get a snack, and I'm gonna be reading The Whistler. The front door opened, slammed shut. Any moment now, Gary would either start buzzing about how well work had gone, or else he would stalk upstairs and think how best to word his complaints about his boss while he changed for supper. It was always one or another. There seemed to be no in-between grounds with Gary's job. Today was, was a complaining day and a bad one, by the way, Gary's feet stomped up the stairs and down the hall to the bedroom. I sighed and mentally prepared myself as I extinguished the flame beneath the stew. I had learned long ago that it is best to let Gary vent his frustrations without interruption. If he was allowed to say his peas, he would calm down quickly, and then we could carry on with our evening. I glanced up at the ceiling suddenly. Surprised, is that whistling? He was not angry, spiteful, nothing like that, just cheerful. Intermittent whistling. I had been wrong then. Gary was not frustrated, quite the opposite. It seemed inside I was relieved. I knew it never had anything to do with me, but listening to Gary complaining did begin to grate on my nerves until it felt like I was the reason for all his troubles. Maybe he ha has some really good news, I thought to myself as I began setting the table. It certainly had to be something above and beyond a pleasant work day that put Gary in such a good mood. The phone rang as I poured the milk, startling me and sending opalescent puddles spreading across the table, quickly throwing some napkins down to halt the expanding spill. I wiped off my hands and answered, Hello? Hi, honey. It's me. I'm going to be pretty late tonight. Traffic's horrible. I think there was an accident or something. I'm not sure how long it will take to clear up, so you should probably just start eating without me. See you soon, I hope. And without giving me a chance to reply, Gary hung up. A deathly chill encased me as I turned to face the front door. I could see it was still locked. Upstairs, the whistling continued. The tune was familiar, but it was so off-key that I had trouble naming it. It went on and on, halting now and then for a breath, rising and falling until I could stand it no longer. I found myself inching towards the knife rack on the counter, and before I knew it, I had pulled the largest blade from, the, from its place. Whoa, I thought to myself, slow down, there was an intruder in my house. My best option was to call the police. Sliding the knife back into place, I picked up the phone and began to dial 911. What answered was not friendly, calming voice I expected. I slowly pulled the handset away from my ear and stared at it with revolution as a series of cheerful but off-key notes came pouring out, thrilling in awful dissonance with the song from upstairs. My hand began to shake as I returned the phone into its place. My eyes turned once more to the ceiling. The sound had devolved into a senseless warbling. S 
something that I found hard to connect with a human voice, although the melody was still vaguely familiar. My hand once more reached for the knife. I made my way timidly to the stairs, pausing as I came to the front door to make sure that it was really locked. An awful feeling of expectation trickled down the steps as I stared up into the darkness of the second floor hallway, I, and I gripped my knife tighter, holding it in front of me toward, toward what? I had no idea. Taking a deep breath, I began to climb. The upstairs corduroy was empty, but I could not relax. The door to the master bedroom was shut, and I eyed it warily in the knowledge that it was always left open. Listening closely beneath the whistling, I thought I could hear footsteps on the other side, padding softly as they shuffled across the carpet, swallowing the lump in my throat. I placed one hand on the doorknob, took a moment to calm my pounding heart, and wrenched the door open immediately, and the whistling stopped. The master bedroom was vacant, my ears ringing with a sudden silence. I crept inside my knife held ready, but there was no sign of anyone besides myself. Releasing a pent sob of fear, I collapsed on the bed. Just a second ago, there had been someone in here. I heard them whistling, walking back and forth. I would have sworn that I even saw a faint shadow pass underneath the door before I forced it open. Pulling myself together, I got up from the bed and made one last inspection of the room. Nothing. Had I imagined it all? Still shaking from fright, I resigned myself to the fact that the bedroom was empty and turned to leave. A tall figure blocked the door. A frightened shriek erupted from my throat as my arm instinctively fell, burying my knife in the intruder's chest. The figure grunted it was a man and stumbled into the hall, colliding with the far wall before collapsing onto the floor, gingerly Fingering the bleeding hole in his shirt, the man looked weakly up at me. G Gary, I stammered. His eyes slid halfway shut, his head rolled to one side, and his breath fell silent. The dripping knife dropped from my hand as I covered my mouth in shock. My husband lay dead at my feet, and I, as the horror began to overwhelm me, cold draft hit the back of my neck so softly I could barely make it out. Whistling, it passed by my ear and down the hall, heavy, stomping footsteps as the voice moved downstairs. The front door opened and at that moment I recognized the song and the lyrics ran through my head. Now we're done, it was sure fun, but thanks to you, now we're through. The door slammed shut. The whistling was extinguished and my screams filled the air. The end. I hope I didn't scare you all. I guess you're gonna have to be sleeping with the lights on tonight. But jokes aside, I hope you guys really enjoyed this because I really enjoyed making this speed paint and reading this story to you guys. And if you want more of these, um, just comment down below and I'll make sure I actually make more. Just, if you want, you could give any suggestions of stories or links or something that you found that I should read next. Because, um, I don't know what stories you would like to hear. Anyways. You could subscribe if you want, but I'm not forcing you. And peace out. And be safe out there.